as uh, uh, information or even his history. And it's all history rewritten and recreated from a, a totally different uh, made up point of view. And so it's easy to, you know, that's, that's something we never dreamed of. I never dreamed of that growing up, that people would actually rewrite history. But that's common now. Just, you know, erase all the stuff that happened and just write a different history. And everybody thinks, hey, I just saw that on the History Channel or whatever, you know. But no, we need to get our history from, from the truth, what really happened. And I'm just old enough to know a lot of what happened because I heard it from the perspective of the people at the time. Now we're hearing something different. So don't fall for propaganda. Amen? Hello? Yes, don't fall for propaganda. All right, so my title of my message is Israel, the battle is the Lord's. I wish we could scream that at them right now. Uh, a lot of you liked last week's message. I didn't get finished, so this is kind of the finishing up of it today. But then more stuff is happening, so I really want us to get the biblical perspective. Amen. Okay? Um, sometimes, you know, we go through, I say we, those of us who are preaching this stuff, go through this feeling like, you know, we're preaching this a lot. Is this like, you know, are we going too much? Are we doing, saying too much? Are we doing it all the time? And what's wrong with that? Well, now you know, that's important. We have to do it because this is where we're living. This is the end of the age. This is what we're dealing with. And when you know what God is doing, you're not going to be shaken by what's happening. Amen? But how many of you know the world is shaken up pretty bad right now? But it's, there's nothing to what's coming. This is only the beginning. This is going to go on for a long time. And as I told you a couple of years ago, it's going to uh, escalate into a, not only a regional conflict, but a world conflict. Yeah. So, there you go. Now, I'm either right or wrong, but I believe I'm right. Because I believe that's what we see in the Bible. Amen? Now, it's really not, you know, I'm not prophesying. I didn't have a dream. I didn't have a, an angel as they all seem to have these days. I didn't go through a portal. <laughs> Got to get that in there. Uh, no, I just read the Bible and God speaks to me. Right? And the Bible tells us that the end of the age, it's all about war. God is about, has declared war. You say, oh, I, I, wait a minute, God doesn't do that. Yeah, he does. In the end of the days, it says war is determined. Go read it in Daniel chapter 9. War has been determined. Amen. And it will go on until Jesus comes and finishes it. Yes. There will be one battle after another, and eventually it will come to a peak where all the nations are gathered against Israel and Jerusalem. Yeah. We hopefully aren't going to see that, but <laughs> with God's help, right? Amen? All right, so let's get started on today's message. I have a lot to cover in very little time. First of all, I want to make it really clear, this is a spiritual war. This isn't just some people annoyed at each other. This is a spiritual war that's been going on for thousands of years. It's rooted in jealousy and resentment and anger that has been uh, from the early days of Jacob and Esau, that's really what it's about this time. And, of course, Ishmael and, and uh, uh, Isaac, right? And so this is the roots of this thing, and it goes way back. And if you haven't caught on yet, that we uh, parents can pass on things to the children. Absolutely. And uh, that can grow until a whole culture becomes... Uh, set in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? All right, uh, so it's a spiritual war, and it's mentioned in the Bible. And it's even, we're even told what's going to happen. And that's what we want to look at today. Now, I want to say clearly that, uh, and I said it last week, I want to reiterate that there are God-haters out there. Okay, and there's a lot of them. 
And they're not just people who are lost and don't know the Lord. I'm talking about real God-haters who hate God. And, uh, you know, I, I don't believe there's anything, like, I don't believe atheists exist. I don't. You know why I don't believe it? Because they're mad at God. And if you don't believe in God, how can you be mad at him? <laughs> so not really atheists, because the stuff comes out. Right? And, um, but when they're mad at God, they're going to be mad at Israel also. They're going to hate Israel. Because why do people hate little tiny country? Well, they don't just hate the country. They hate Jews. And they hate Israel because that's a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And so God, they're fighting the idea that God did this. They don't want to accept that God actually brought these people back. Because then they have to accept that God really is in charge. And he really is real. And he's alive. And and then they would have to face him. <laughs> yes. They don't want to do that. Yeah. But also there's a spiritual component. Obviously Satan is behind it. Those who worship uh, um, Allah are worshiping Baal. Yes. It's, it's uh, this principality of the Middle East that Israel had got caught up in all the time. Yes. And it's, uh, Baal is really Satan. Amen? Yes. Now, you don't have to agree with that, but I'm just telling you that's the way it is. And um, you're seeing it fleshed out in hatred and violence, like is beyond our comprehension, right? And um, by the way, the word Hamas in Hebrew is all over the Bible, and it means violence. <laughs> just so you know, it's very interesting. Uh, so, I want to also make it clear that those who speak against Israel are speaking against God. That's right. Why, is Israel that, that holy? No, they're not. <laughs> they're chosen by God. That's why they're holy. Amen. Not because they're do, you know, doing everything right. You understand? Do you do everything right? Yes. But does God love you? Yes. Did he choose you? Yes. Yeah. So apply that to them. God has chosen them as a nation. They're going to lead the world. They're God's, God's nation. Amen. And he makes no apology for that. In fact, he says anyone that touches them touches the apple of his eye. That's right. You're like, poke God in the eye. When you poke God in the eye, you know, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Right? Are we there? So, you notice now, all of a sudden, the baby killers are concerned about human life. (laughs) The ones who want to slaughter babies up to the time they're born are now the ones screaming about saving life, humanitarian, and yet it's only non-Jewish life. Anyway, enough of that. Let me go forward. Uh, so you remember this message about dividing lines of truth, and I said that these were dividing lines that were going to come, and what's the one on top of the list? That was back in August when I shared that with you. Now you see that the whole world is divided over Israel, and that division is going to get worse, worse and worse, because the war is going to intensify. Um, so, educate yourself. Don't listen to the media, right? Amen. The media are not friends of God. Agreed? Amen. If, you, if you connect yourself to the media, particularly the so-called mainstream media, you're going to get the wrong view of everything. Yes. And you're going to come out with, with feelings and emotions that you don't even know where you got them. Right? Because they're anti-God. Anyway, um, you know the whole hospital thing, right? You heard the big uproar over that Israel had hit a hospital and uh, deliberately. And of course, it's very offensive to Israel to have United States leaders coming to them or Western leaders coming to them and assuming that they hit the hospital, that they did that. 
Can you imagine if they did that to us and said, you guys bombed the hospital. What's the matter with you? It's like, no, we wouldn't do that intentionally. And I don't know about our government. I'd honestly be more inclined to think Israel wouldn't do it <laughs> more. But anyway, with the CIA, who knows what they might do. Uh, but anyway, that will get me in trouble probably. But Oh, well. But Israel doesn't plan on hitting hospitals. And then we find out, oh, it wasn't them at all. It was one of their own rockets that backfired and fell down and hit the hospital. Right? And you know, to this day, the press will not adjust their stories. They will not apologize for what they said. And they won't call these people who butchered and cut up people and burned them and raped them and did all these other things to them and tortured them. They're all, about 80% of them were tortured. Um, they won't uh, call them terrorists. Okay, you're getting the picture, right? All right, and that's taken me away from my message. So let's keep going. Israel is a dividing line. And don't fall into this nonsense that, oh, let's all get along. We're not going to get along. Evil and good cannot get along together. Ra lawlessness and righteousness don't go together. Light and darkness won't live together. Amen. Amen? Now, see, the ones who want to get along, they want to erase righteousness. They want to erase, they want to just, you know, all get along and all do whatever we want. Right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is that light and darkness can't exist together, and light is going to win, and darkness is going to be eradicated. Amen. Amen? Because we're transferred into the kingdom of light. And the kingdom of light is going to fill this earth. Amen? The kingdom of God. Okay, let's get going here. I said that already, but let's do it, really do it. All right. I want to, again, uh, emphasize this, even though I did it last time. Uh, for I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the lands and I will bring you into your own land. That's God's word in Ezekiel, right? That's the Jewish people. He said he's going to scatter them to all the nations first. Then he said, at the end of the age, I'm going to gather you from all the lands and bring you back to your own land. And that's what he has done, right? Um, now, God says it's their land. So that should end it right there. So the nations who say it's not their land are, are challenging God. They're not challenging me, they're challenging God. Now who do you think is going to win that argument? Now don't, be, don't think that God's surprised by any of these things. He knows all those things. He knew those things would happen, and he's already recorded them for us and given us the answers. Amen? Amen. How, how comforting is that? Even though it's horrible and hard days, but how comforting is it to know how it's going to come out? Amen. So God restored Israel. I want to make it clear, God did it, not the United Nations. Not the USA, not the British, and not the Rothschilds. God did it. Amen? He said he was going to do it thousands of years ago. He did it in our day. And that's, by the way, the primary uh, sign that we are in the end of the age. The biggest sign of all. All right, and uh, what is a Zionist? Do you know what a Zionist is? That's somebody who loves Jerusalem and wants Jerusalem to be restored and wants the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. That's a Zionist. Yeah. Now, they're secular Zionists. They just want Jerusalem, okay? But those of us who know, the word is a biblical word, and it it's refers to the mountain of the Lord, Zion. The word of the, the Lord will go forth from Zion, Zion right? So we are Zionists. Say, so, oh, isn't that a bad thing? No, that's a good thing. We want Jesus to come and reign from Zion. So we're Zionists. We want it built up. We don't want it destroyed. We don't want it 
idol worship going on on the Temple Mount. Amen. We're Zionists, true Zionists. Mm -hmm. Oh, some of you are not so comfortable with that. <laughs> but that's what we are. Yeah. And I'm very proud of it. Amen. Because God says, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain, Psalm 2. Amen? Amen? That's Jesus. God has already installed him. It's yet to happen, but it, he's already the, the legal uh, authorized king of Zion. Amen. Okay. Um, and it says the deliverer will come from Zion. Zion. So be a Zionist. If you want all those things, you are a Zionist. All right. Um, again, another verse. Then it will happen. We got some great verses today. You're going to love these. Then it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover with his hand the second time. That's important. This is the first time was back from Babylon. This is the second time. And notice he says he will gather the remnant of his people who will remain from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. In other, in other words, from everywhere. And he will gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Who's going to do that? Who did that? Who did that in our day? The Lord. Did he use other, other people and stuff? Yeah, but he did it. This is an important point. Because we see wicked men, and we see how God uses wicked men, and we get all bummed out. But God uses righteous people, and he uses wicked people. God raised up Trump to get the Jerusalem thing done. We knew it at the time. Then Trump started meddling and dividing up the land with the help of a bunch of Christians who were ignorant of their Bible. And now we have what we have right now, which I'm going to say no more. But God is able to use anybody. I believe our country is under judgment. That's why we're going through what we're going through. But please don't focus on the persons involved. Don't look at them. Don't look at the nations involved. God is able to flip it around like that. Just one day, it can all change. Because we get so concerned about how is this ever going to happen? And all. God. <laughs> I mean, they talk about all the weapons they have and everything. Have you seen the weapons God has? No, I haven't either. But, I'm, you know, if you want to talk about weapons, I think he's got per some pretty good ones. <laughs> How many angels does it take to wipe out 185,000? One. One. <laughs> Okay, so that's enough of that. So let's have faith that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen? All right, let's move on. For behold, in those days and at that time, that's today, when I restored the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, that's what God's been doing for the last century, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat then, I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my inheritance, Israel. Just in case you didn't get it. Israel. Whom they have scattered among the nations and they have divided up my land. Why couldn't somebody have sat down? You know, it, Trump asked the, the Christians, they're all there. Prophetic guys even, Bible prophecy guys, he asked them. They said, Mr. President, it's a good plan. It wasn't a good plan. It's the best one that's come up, but it's not a good idea to divide God's land when he so clearly said no. Right? So, it's God's land, and who did he give it to? Is it, is it, does, that, does that settle up for you? Yeah? You sure? Okay. But just in case you're not sure... Look it up again and read it. But also, God confirmed it through Gentile rulers. Just in case. You know, people say, oh, well, it's not legal. Oh, totally legal. United Nations approved it in 1947. Yeah. Okay? And uh, they wouldn't do it now. 
But that just goes to show you how God can turn things around. But now we find ourselves agreeing with some of the people we would never agree on anything else. Right? Uh, so there you go. Can God do it? Yes. yes, he can. All right, so we talked last week about the partition plan. And just to reiterate, all of the nations in the current Middle East were all carved out by the British and the French. They were created. Now they have histories going back generations, but the boundaries that are there now, like Iraq, uh, Syria, Afghanistan, all those nations, they were all carved out with a pen, pen, I don't know what kind of pen, but they sat down and said, we're going to give this to these people and that. Jordan was created. All of them were created before 1948. Israel was supposed to get this big chunk of land here and they left Israel to last. In fact, they reneged on doing it with Israel. They weren't even going to do it. But they forgot about God. So it happened in 1948. And you know, when they finally got around to giving it to Israel, look at what they gave them. This little tiny sliver of land. And they took away the best part of it and gave more to the Arabs, to Jordan which was already created, Jordan was created by the British. Now, why did the British do that? Because it fell into their hands after the war, after World War I. The Ottoman Empire ruled it all. And nobody was upset when the Ottoman Empire was ruling it. But when it was now, they're upset because there are Jews there. You understand? Let me show you a picture. That's the Arab Middle East. Do you see where Israel is? It's a little tiny dot speck up here. Now these people, all of this land, I, I can't imagine how much land it is, but they can't find room for one single refugee. They won't take one single refugee. Why? Because they don't want them. But they're jumping up and down about how unhumanitarian we are. Right? Hello? But they, are, they don't want Israel to exist. You have to understand that. They do not want Israel to exist. It's not about land. It's about the fact that they're there. And for your information, there are lots of Arabs that get along quite well with the Jews. That, that's something you'll never hear on the media. But it's a fact. There are Arabs that are serving in the military. There are Arabs who are in very important positions that actually consider themselves Israelis. Okay? Have you ever heard that on the media? No, you'd have to go there and live there to see that. Anyway, all right, we're moving on. Psalm 83, we started last week. Remember, we're going to go quickly through it again. We believe, um, the we, proverbial we, is me, I believe that this is probably Psalm 83 that we're looking at right now. It, uh, now, I won't say de definitely, but all of the markings are there. And it, if it's not happening right now, it's going to happen very soon. But I think it's happening right now. I don't think there's any going back from this situation. Okay? Now, it'll be dragged out for a while, probably. But let's read it. God... Do not remain quiet, do not be silent, and God, do not be still. For behold, your enemies make an uproar, and those who, what? Those who hate you have exalted themselves. They make shrewd plans against your people, and here it is, conspire together against your treasure once. They have a conspiracy. What is the conspiracy? You've heard this many times if you've been paying attention to this, to the news. They have said, come and let us wipe them out as a nation. That's the motive for the fighting. It's not the, their own need. It's not their need. It's they, the motive is, let's wipe out Israel. So that the name of Israel will no longer be remembered. For they have conspired together with one mind. They make a covenant against you. And who are they? 
He goes on to list them. The tents of Edom, which are essentially the Palestinians, and the Ishmaelites, and Moab, which is Jordan, the Hagrites. We've got a um, little bit of Egypt in there. We've got Gebel, which is Phoenicia. Uh, the tents of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagrites, Gebel, Ammon, and Amalek. Ammon is also Jordan, and Jordan, of course. You know the position of Jordan. He wouldn't even meet with the president. He got so mad over the hospital thing, and of course it, it was the wrong information. But did he re, did he say he was sorry? Did he change his mind? No. In fact, they all had a meeting in Egypt just a couple of days ago, and they could not come to a, a, a decision to call Hamas terrorists. Just that one thing. Even though they all know they are, but they wouldn't say it. Okay. They have formed a conspiracy. You see that? And what is the conspiracy? To wipe Israel off the map. As they normally say, to push them into the sea. Right? So what does God think about that? Is that happening? If that happens, your Bible is worthless. Hello? Don't look up there. Look at me. If that happens, your Bible is not true. Because that would mean God, all the promises God made to Israel are, are null and void. And that's never going to happen. Because God keeps his promises. Amen? Amen. amen. Say amen with me. Come on. Does God keep his promises? Because he keeps his promises to, the, to Israel, he will keep his promises to you as well. Amen. All right. Now, what is this map here you're all running to? There's the, what we call the inner circle and the outer circle, okay? Uh, Psalm 83 is the inner circle of nations that are mentioned in Psalm 83. The outer ones are mentioned in the Magog-Magog War, which I believe will take place during the tribulation. Okay? And the reason I believe, I know you'll, you'll hear most people on there, the pre-weekers are all saying it's, this is coming next, the Gog Magog War. But I don't believe it is for this reason. After the Gog Magog War, God said he will not allow his name to be profaned anymore. Okay? And all the nations will know. And he says a lot of things like that. And... So that's hard to imagine that the tribulation and the Antichrist would come after that. So unless someone can reconcile that with me, I think it's part of the Armageddon campaign. All right, but be that as it may, the nations mentioned in this outer ring that come up against Israel in the Gog-Magog invasion, Gog, uh, many think Gog is some kind of spiritual leader, or some kind of principality. Uh, but anyway, it's Russia. Magog is Russia and its satellites and the nations that are mentioned here. Turkey, um, the so ex-Soviet republics, Iran, uh, Ethiopia, and Libya. Now, all those nations are aligned together right now very strongly against the West. There's a war going on between the East and West. You know that? And it's been f being fought in all different theaters. Being fought financially, uh, in, in Russia, in Ukraine, all over. We're in a proxy war with Ukraine. We've been for a year and a half. The West. I don't know if Ireland's participated. They're neutral, right? Maybe the Irish Navy went over there. Huh? What do you think? <laughs> no. No, they don't get it. That's all right. Ireland has always stayed neutral in these things, but they're not really neutral. Not really. Anyway, uh, so the inner circle of nations that are mentioned in Psalm 83, here's the curious thing, that when you get to the Gog Magog War, they're never mentioned. They don't show up anymore. They're not mentioned. How could possibly they not be mentioned since they're in the forefront of everything right now? And that tells me that they won't be there. 
And uh, certainly not in the state they're in right now. They'll be probably likely conquered by Israel. That's what I'm going to throw at you. Now let's see if I'm right. What would you do if I'm right? Come on, look at you. <laughs> what would you do if I'm right, if this is the outcome of this war? I'll just be going along with what the scripture says, that's all. But it's what the scripture says. There's no way they'd be left out if they were still there. So that tells me something has to change on the ground, right? So the end of the psalm says, Deal with them as with Midian, as with Sisera and Jabin, at the river of Kishon, who were uh, destroyed at Endor, who became like dung for the ground. This is a prayer. You know, Christians are like, that's a prayer? Yeah, it's a prayer. And it applies to these days. And all their leaders like Zeba and Zalmunna, well, those wars were the one, those were the peoples that tried to destroy Israel and wipe them out when they came in the land. And, and they came up against Israel and tried to destroy them. And who, guess what happened to them? Whatever you try to do to Israel, that's what happens to you. The United States has been dividing, is trying to divide the land for 30 years. And what's happened to us? We're divi hopelessly divided and cannot be repaired, I think. Unless we get a miracle. You understand? And every, go back and chase every empire throughout history, whatever way they treated Israel is what happened to them. And we're no different. And the scripture says, Genesis chapter 12, uh, to Abraham, whoever blesses you, I will bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. Mm -hmm. and those who curse Israel are coming uh, directly against God. And th those who say that, God did, that Israel doesn't have the right to exist are contradicting God and going directly against Him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the prayer. Essentially, the prayer says, wipe them out. That's essentially what it says. Do to them like you did to the, these other nations, and it lists them. A Lord, may they fill their faces with dishonor so that they're... Now, I'm not saying this, okay? Please get me right here. I'm not saying this. That's what the psalm is saying. I know how you love the psalms. Christians love the psalm. I like the psalms. Put, them on me. Put this one on your refrigerator, see what happens. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm teasing. Terrify them with your storm. Fill their faces with dishonor so that they will seek your name, O Lord. See, God has to take people down in order for them to seek him. Amen? That's what really matters. God is revealing himself to the nations, and he's going to do it through Israel. And he's going to do it through wars. Two world's wars were fought to bring Israel back to the land. And now this one has to do with the temple. You all know that, right? Right, that's what it's about. In fact, the, they even called it that when they started off. All right. How you doing? You okay? I have heard. Now, these are a bunch of prophecies. Oh, okay, this one is from Zephaniah. These are amazing prophecies. We didn't see, really see them so clearly until they started happening. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the insults of the people of Ammon, that would be Jordan today, with which they have reproached my people and made arrogant threats against their, what? Their borders. Oh my goodness, it's right there, isn't it? Now, people will say, well, those nations don't exist anymore. Well, no, but you know what? Uh, Philistines, the Philistine, Palestinian means Philistine. That's where it comes from. Now, what we have is remnants of them. A lot of them are just Arabs, okay? And again, I'm not saying anything about them personally. I'm not attacking them. I'm just simply saying this is what the Scripture says. And there are Arabs who actually don't want war and don't want violence and don't want to destroy Israel. Okay? Let's make that clear. But the ones who have charge 
feel very differently. All right, um, look what he says. They, are, they make arrogant threats against their borders. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be like Sodom and the people of Ammon like Gomorrah, overrun with weeds and salt pits and perpetual desolation. When has that happened? Hasn't happened yet. The residue of my people shall plunder them, the remnant. The remnant of my people shall possess them. This they shall have for their pride, because they have not, because they have reproached and made arrogant threats against the people of the Lord of hosts. Do you believe this or not? Ooh, maybe believing the Bible is not so comfortable anymore. This they shall have for their pride, right? They've made arrogant threats. The Lord will be awesome to them, for he will reduce to nothing all the gods of the earth. Amen. People shall worship him. Now that's what it's really about. Each one from his place, indeed, all the shores of the nations. Amen? You should say amen to that. God is going to bring all this around to who he is. And the nations are going to know what he did, and he's going to do it through Israel. Amen. And there's something in us that resists that. I don't. I think it's replaced. It's just the remnants of replacement theology that makes us want to resist that. But there are people who believe God's going to do it through the church. How is that any different? But we know the church and Israel are not the same. They're different entities, right? We have a different call than they do. They have a national call. We don't. We have a spiritual call. Amen. We're not called to do things like that, but they are. All right. Uh, Thus says the Lord God, because of what Edom did against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and has greatly offended by avenging himself on them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand against Edom, cut off man and beast from it, and make it desolate from Teman, Dedan shall fall by the sword. I will lay my vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel. You see that? Now, who are Edom? Edom was the territory of Esau, the brother of Jacob. And Edom uh, was in the mountains in the east, the southern Jordan, really. And uh, when Israel was uprooted by the... Um, Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, they moved out into uh, the territory of Judah and moved up and they took over Hebron. And in the time of Jesus, Edom was still there. It was called Edomia. And for your information, Herod was an Edomite. Herod, the wicked king, right? So we're not saying that everybody there is Edomites, but there is a remnant of Edomites there. All right? So people say, oh, they don't exist. But they do exist in some form. There are still remnants left. They're kind of all mixed up together, but that's where they came from. That's their origin. Now, what is this message to them? Repent. The message to everybody is repent. Because if you go against God, it's not going to go well for you. Has God been patient with this? How long has Israel been pounded? I, I was there in 2003, and I heard the bombing. I heard a bomb in, in Jaffa Street, and it was all horrible. I mean, people were blown up. They have been doing violence for a long, long time, a long, long time. And you know, they pay, the Palestinian Authority pays people to kill Jews. They give them money. These, these people who did this thing got $3 million dollars from Abbas, Mahmoud Abbas. Okay? And where does that money come from? From us and the Europeans and just about everybody, the United Nations. And a lot of them, they confiscate it from the people who really do have needs and they use it for terrorism, for weapons and all that stuff. And then they build big build big mansions for themselves in other countries like Qatar and, and uh, Turkey and other places. 
And they don't even live in Gaza. Am I making my point? Well, let's see. I'm not really making any point. I'm just telling you what God says. Then it will happen. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Then it will happen on that day that the Lord, I just read that to you. He will recover again, right? But look down and it goes on. Uh, it goes on. This part we didn't read before. When God has done that in bringing them back, so we know what time it is. It's when God brings them back, right, from all the nations to their own land. Then the jealousy of Ephraim will depart, right? He's saying basically Judah and there'll be no Ephraim and Judah. It'll be one nation. Uh, and Judah will not harass Ephraim. So they will not be fighting among themselves. Now, how many of you know they were brought back as one nation? called Israel. There's no Judah and, and uh, you know, Ephraim fighting two different kingdoms. That's what he's saying there. Now look at this. They will swoop down on the slopes of the Philistines on the west. What's that today? Gaza. Now notice that's after God brings them back. So that's today. Together they will plunder the people of the east. That's the other side. Jordan, Edom, and Moab and possess Edom and Moab. So that's telling me that Israel is going to take over Jordan. That's before Messiah comes. And the sons of Ammon will be subject to them. So how is that going to go down in the press? <laughs> you think we got problems now, wait till that stuff starts happening. Amen? They've all got so quiet. This is what the Lord says. When I gather the house, and this one is even more amazing. When I gather the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered and show myself holy among them in the sight of the nations, that means God's going to demonstrate his power. This war is going to be, he's going to use nations and he's going to use Israel in. But in the Gog Magog war, God is directly getting involved. That's going to be his doing. In fact, Armageddon is going to be the Messiah who puts that fire out. Yeah. Amen? Now, maybe you'd like to live in this kind of a mess for the rest of you know, eternity, but I don't think I do. I want peace. How about you? I want real peace. I'm sorry I'm looking at the clock, but that tells me how much time. And some of you out there don't like that, but... The truth, I'm not there yet. The truth is that people do have an attention span, and I don't like to go beyond it because then I lose them. So that's the reason we do it. The nations will know. This is after the whole campaign of Gog, Magog, okay? The nations will know that the house of Israel went into exile for their iniquity because they acted treacherously against me. And I hid my face. Does, do the nations know that right now? No, they don't. Should they know it? Yes, but they don't want to hear it. They want to forget all about what they went through and the Holocaust and all that. They want to forget it all. No people has gone through what they've gone through. I don't care what you say. Are there bad Jews? Yeah, lots of them. Are there bad Irish people? Are there bad Americans? So do we throw out all the Americans because there's some bad ones? But yet people throw out the Jews because there's some bad Jews. All right. You know, they, when they are good, they're really, really good. When they're bad, they're really, really bad. Because there's a blessing of God on them. They do everything really well. And we're, the nations are jealous of that. Right now, their technology is ahead of all the rest of us. Why? They're only a tiny little nation. Because the blessing of God is on them, even when in their backslidden state. What's going to happen when they turn to God? It's going to be life from the dead, Paul says. Amen? Do you love the Jewish people? 
You would believe how many Christians right now are preaching against Israel and speaking against Israel. The least you can do is just keep your mouth closed if you don't know what's going on. Because speaking against Israel is to speak against God's work. Okay, now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob. I'm jumping in the middle. Have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They will forget their disgrace and all their treachery, which they perpetrated against me, when they live securely on their own land. Is that happening right now? No. Come on, you guys. It's okay to answer. Is that happening right now? They're not living securely, are they? Um, And with no one to make them afraid. When I bring them back from the people and gather them from the lands of their enemies, then I shall be sanctified through them in the sight of many nations. So God is determined that he's going to show himself strong through Israel. So you better better wake up today. You better get ready. And you better be able to show them these verses and tell them it's in the Bible. You should know it. You say, why did God know going to say to you, well, what's so special about them? God chose them. You say, well, can he do that? Yeah, he's God. He can do that. Amen? amen. Come on, guys. Amen? 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 amen. You've got to say amen to that. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God, because I made them go into exile. This is the Jews now among the nations, and then gathered them again to their own land, and I will leave none of them there any longer. So God is going to, Israel is going to know, they're going to come to the Messiah, you know that. But the other, all the nations are going to know what God did and why he did it. And he's going to show his glory through his people, Israel. And that's going to be the defeat of these nations. And the whole earth will be talking about Israel probably the rest of your life. Not just today or tomorrow. So get used to it. Oh, did I, did I miss something? Did I miss the scripture? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, I didn't finish it. It says, then they will live securely on the, their own land, right? Live securely when I execute judgments. So I, I missed the best part. Then they will live on it securely, and they will build houses, plant vineyards, and live securely when I execute judgments upon all around them who despise them. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. What does that say? That God's going to execute judgment on all all around them who despise them? There it is in black and white. And it's in our day because it's after he brings them back. And they're going to live securely. They're not living securely now. And when the Gog Magog thing comes, it says they come up against a land who's living securely without any gates or walls. They have walls right now. They have barriers. The barrier was busted down from Gaza. That's how all these terrors got in. They have these barriers which have been helping a lot. But Israel is going to not have any barriers or any walls because they're not going to need them. And that's before Messiah comes. How, how's that? That's, that's very clear. Now, either that prophecy is wrong, or you're going to see a very different Israel outcome out of this war. Now, there's a potential that it will actually be that size. And this is not coming from me. There are Bible prophecy teachers who believe this as well as I do. In fact, I get some of this, a good bit of this, from a guy named Bill Salas, who's written a book on this subject. And he's, he's really got something here, I believe. Anyway. Um, hey, we're doing okay. I'm almost done. Doing really good. Now, this is... Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Joel chapter 3. Come, thread the grapes, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon have become dark, and the stars have lost their brightness. 
Here it is. The Lord roars from Zion, Jerusalem, and utters his voice from Jerusalem. So Zion and Jerusalem are the same thing. And the heavens and the earth quake, but the Lord is a refuge for his people. Amen? You know what a refuge is? It's a place where you can be safe in the midst of a storm, right? So in Psalm 2, it says, kiss the sun, lest he be angry. The sun's going to get angry. I really think he's angry. So, well, Jesus doesn't get angry. Well, yeah, he did. He got very angry over two or three times. He, he put whips together and beat those guys, those money changers. And he got everyone upset, and all the leaders come to him and say, well, who gives you the authority to do this? You, you haven't seen Jesus angry. But you better get that in your theology. Because as, as loving and as gracious and as wonderful as he is, he, he's going to get angry. Because he will not put up with, with, the time will come when he will not put up with any more wickedness. Amen. Aren't you glad? I mean, come on. It, doesn't this require a change of thinking here? I mean, you want, you want a God that just lets everybody kill everybody forever? Is that what you want? No, he's not going to let that happen anymore. He's going to put an end to all the wickedness. And Jesus is going to do it. And the heavens and the earth quake, but the Lord is a refuge for his people and a stronghold for the sons of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I wish they would know that right, right now. I wish they would learn that they need to go to God and not to the American president. I wish they would learn that he's their refuge. Amen. But then we need to learn it too. Because Psalm 2 says, Blessed are those who take refuge in him, the Son. And that's us. We've, we've gone to the altar. We've grabbed horn, hold of the horns of the altar so we could take refuge in him. In Jesus, we are safe. Amen? In Jesus, we are secure. You don't seem too excited. Come on. Are you in Jesus? You're secure. He's our refuge. Whatever storms come, whatever wars happen, God is our refuge and strength. Jesus is, a, that's not just a psalm we like singing or putting on the refrigerator. That's real. Amen? But notice from this day forward, get it in your brain that Israel is going to occupy as much of God's time as we do. That just sends some people steaming. And I told you Israel was going to be a dividing line. Now, all these things I said about the nations round about, they apply to all nations. I know God specifically mentions them but in the prophecies. But... It's true for all the nations who do not know God and refuse to listen to his word or refuse to obey them and reject God Almighty all the time. They're going to get dealt with too. So it's not just one group. Then the Gog Magog thing comes later. God's going to judge all the nations of the earth. So mark that down somewhere because that's going to happen and you're hopefully not going to see it. Amen? But he's going to rescue and save his people. And he's going to fill us with his joy and with his peace. And we're going to spend eternity with him forever. And we're going to roar from Zion. And we're going to live in Zion. And we're going to live in the, whole, in the Zion, in the new Jerusalem. Is this stuff starting to get more real for you? It's what Israel is like. I know it's sad. I know it's terrible to see people dying and it's horrible to see people suffering. And I agree. No matter who they are, we all agree with that. Amen? Now, yes. oh, come on. That was the time to say yes. Amen. 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 We do. We hate that. But we also are excited because it means the day of the Lord is closer. Yes. Closer. We see the day getting closer, don't we? And that's really great news. Amen. This will all end. Now, I want to, real quickly, um, we're in a spiritual battle too. Do you know that? 
you're at war as a Christian. Say, well, you're not fighting anybody with uh, guns or, or, you know, rockets or whatever, but you are fighting. The devil is trying to destroy you, and you need to fight. Amen? Now, of course, he has no authority over you. He has no power over you unless you give it to him. But you need to make it clear who you belong to. Make it clear what you will put up with and what you won't. Right? And, you know, the warfare, we see propaganda is a means of warfare. And now the propagandists have YouTube. They have all Facebook. They have all these great platforms that can pump out propaganda and for the people who don't know, just buy into it. Right? But transfer that over to us. We, what you have to deal with, if you want to walk in victory, is you have to pull down those strongholds. Those, those words. Their words. It's propaganda. The devil is always throwing propaganda at you. Well, you're this, and you're that, and you know, you can't, and you're... He's always throwing propaganda at you. Yep. So if you want to overcome, you just have to reject the propaganda. You have to cast it down. Yep. Bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Then start fighting that warfare. Amen? Amen? Yep. You can do it. Yep. You don't have to listen to lies. You need to just, just like you turn off the TV, turn off that thing in your head that's speaking all those lies. Amen. Just turn it off, those demonic things that are coming at you. Yep. In the name of Jesus, take authority over it. We have to learn to walk in victory, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. Right. We'd be gone if it wasn't for that. Right. All right, last but not least. <laughs> it's... Oh, Gosh, it's late. Okay. How many of you have heard everybody saying, pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Yeah. And you heard me say things that you thought, what? Right? I said, don't pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And you all went, what? Well, let me clarify that today. Okay? With a very quick glance, a very quick glance, right? At Psalm 122. And how does this, what is one? Psalm 122 about, believe it or not, it's about the temple. It's not about the peace of Jerusalem so much. It's about the temple. And they've lifted out this one verse out of it, and that's become the the rallying cry, and they missed the whole point of the psalm. So let's read it. it. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We used to sing a song about that when we were young. I won't sing it now. Our feet are standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Notice what it starts with? Going to the house of the Lord, to the temple. Within your gates, O Jerusalem, a city that is built together and firmly joined together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, uh, an ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for thrones were set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Why? It says why. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. And here's the why. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will now say peace within you for the sake of the house of the Lord. If the house of the Lord wasn't there, there was no peace. This is about the temple. This is a psalm about going up to the temple and praying for Jerusalem when King David was king of Israel. Amen? But it's about the temple. How can we talk about peace when the temple is not there? When when the place is desecrated? When idols are set up on the holy place? Right? Right? I'm saying, we just pray for the people. What are we praying for? Praying for it to stay the way it is? I guess so. But no, God wants us to pray for the house of the Lord to be restored. Now that isn't going to, that's not for us necessarily. That's for the Jews. That's not for us as believers, okay? We don't need the temple. You understand? 
We, we already have all that. We don't need the temple. We are a temple of Christ. But this is God's work to restore his temple and for his holy people that he brought back from the nations. Amen? And there'll be no peace until it's restored and the Messiah comes and cleanses the place. So that's enough of that. I'm done. I just want to end with a video. I think we can do it.